Hi, welcome back to Learning English and Literature. It's been a while, now I'm back. In this lesson, I will be analyzing the Wyeck literature poem backed by D.H. Lawrence. Okay, before we start um, analyzing the poem, I want us to look at some misconceptions about that. Yeah, though not, uh, not a handsome or not a beautiful creature, looks scary, perhaps that was why they drew some, they attached some misconceptions to this uh, creature. Okay, the first misconception is say bats are blind. Uh, bats eyes are small and sometimes poorly developed, but they work just fine, okay? So uh, saying bats are blind is a misconception, okay? Um, mega bats, larger bats that include fruit bats search for food using sight and smell. So if they are blind, how would they search for food? Micro bats, which include the smaller familiar snub-nosed bats, mainly haunt by Echolocution, uh, echolocation. Using this system, bats send out sound waves and listen to the echo to bounce off insects and other objects. So um, it's a misconception uh, if you say bats are blind. Bats in your house are bad luck. Now this is just a uh, superstitious belief, okay? Now bats are probably associated with bad luck because of a vampire legend. Vampires exist only in books and movies, and bats can't cause bad luck, okay? That doesn't mean you want one in your house. It could spread certain diseases. Yes, that's true. Bats in your yard, however, are great. A little brown bat can eat up a thousand mosquito-sized insects in an hour. In fact, bats are so lucky for humans that many people build bat houses to attract them to their yards. All bats have rabies. Now, that's not true. According to the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, only five to six percent of bats captured for testing have rabies. So you see, not all bats have rabies. Bats suck people's blood, of course, the vampire bats, uh, but it's not true, okay? It's not true. Why vampire bats have been known to bite people? They primarily feed on cattle. These bats actually only weigh two ounces and will take just a small amount of blood when they bite the cattle, so not uh, human beings. The bat saliva has special anti-blood clotting properties, and it is being used to develop a medication called draculine, perhaps from that word Dracula. Bats aren't that important, okay? Like bees, bats are pollinators. I think this answers the questions, okay? Pollinators. According to the US Forest Service, bats are responsible for dispersing seeds that grow into bananas, avocados, and nearly 300 other plant species. By chowing down on thousands of bugs each night, bats also act as a natural pest control for plants. So you see, um, Having bats around, um, it's not actually a bad idea, so you shouldn't be scared of them. Now, bats are a wicked enemy, okay? Um, this is just, this is just unfortunate for the creature. Okay, um, bats are quite the opposite. They're unselfish. They're not to share food with other, uh, their food with other bats. Vampire bats will even regurgitate blood for bats who didn't get to feed, wow. Now, this is interesting. And bats actually have an enemy, white nose syndrome. This fungus grows on bats in the US while they hibernate. According to the Organization for Bat Conservation, white nose syndrome has killed 5.7 million bats in the northeastern US since 2006. So um, these are some of the misconceptions uh, about bats. Now let's look at the poem. This is a comprehensive analysis of D.H. Lawrence's poem that. At evening, sitting on this terrace, when the sun from the east, beyond Pisa, 
beyond the mountains of Karar and the Pats, and the world is taken by surprise. When the tired flower of Florence is in gloom beneath the glowing brown hills surrounding. Now, all those places mentioned, Pisa, Carrara, the Florence, they are all places in Italy. Now, um, the poet uh, made it a habit to sit around this scene, you can see here, the scenery, um, towards the evening and watch birds fly, okay? So he sits on this terrace in Florence, Italy, beyond the mountains of Carrara. So this first stanza or this part, he used it to describe the scenery, okay? And what, uh, what actually takes him there. Uh, he actually sits there and watch the sun set, okay? I think um, this poet loves nature and it's quite a pleasant sight when you watch the sun set and animals or birds go to roost. When under the arches of Pontevicu, a green light enters against stream, flush from the west against the current of obscure Anna. Okay, now this, these are places in Florence also. Now what he's saying here is that as the poet, as he observes nature, the sun goes down. And as the sun goes down, suddenly he sees um, creatures flying through the arches of, this is the Pontevicu. So this arches you see you just see birds flying through them okay flying through them you see Arno is a river you can see the river here okay if you see my course you can see the river here so these arches okay these are the Pontevicchio arches so you just see the birds fly through the Pontevicchio look up and you see things flying between the day and the night swallows with spools of dark thread sewing the shadows together. Now, this is not the first time the poet uh, is doing something like this. So he, keep, he usually goes there to watch birds, mostly swallows, okay? So he tells you how the swallows fly, how artistic, okay? The movement of the birds is artistic. The sewing of the shadows together, okay? so. The synchronized movement, just like choreography, as the poet is watching, he sees something aesthetic. So he goes there every day to just watch these birds perform as they go to sleep. They perform their last act for the day before they go to sleep. So this is what has been taking uh, the poet every sunset uh, to Pontevicu. A circle swoop and a quick parabola under the bridges, under the bridge arches where the light pushes through. A sudden turning upon itself of a thing in the air, a dip into the water, and to think the swallows are flying so late. Swallows? Okay. Now, but this day, he saw birds flying. But these birds were not characteristic of swallows. So he was like, why are swallows flying so late? Okay. Perhaps by 6.30, the swallows are gone. But he says that he's seven because this bird kept flying. So he started wondering, why are these swallows flying so late? So he's confused. Okay. And he starts to wonder, how come? I've been doing this for a number of times, for so many, for, for a long time. How come? Why today? Why would these birds just do something different? Okay, the birds display different traits that he has never seen before. So he's wondering, swallows, you see, this question, this question a, a rhetorical one, swallows shows a state of confusion. Are these birds swallows? Of course, he was not expecting any other bird. Okay, so he just imagined those birds were swallows. So he's still wondering, why are swallows behaving differently today? Dark air life looping yet missing the pure loop, a twitch, a twitter, an elastic shudder in flight, and serrated wings against the sky, like a glove, a black glove thrown up at the light and falling back. Now, the flying pattern of the swallows is different from what he's saying now. Yes, he begins to notice some similarities, but he also begins to notice the differences. 
like the looping, the pure loop, the twitch, and the twitter, and the shoulder in the flight. The flight of the bat is not as swift and smooth as the swallows. Never swallows. Now, he, he, he disagrees. He said, no, these birds cannot be swallows. Bats, he realizes, wow, bats, the swallows are gone. He's kind of disappointed. Yeah, okay. He never expected to see the bats. Okay. He, he was stunned. So the question is, where are the swallows? The swallows are gone. Where are the swallows? At a wavering instant, the swallows give way to bats by the Pontificum changing guard. Now, what he's saying is that in a twinkling of an eye, the swallows vanished, left the scene for the bats to come in for their own performance. It's like an arena. It's like where they perform. The swallows have, they are done performing. They've exited the stage. The bats are, are coming now to perform, okay? And everything happens in a flash, okay? The swallows are like they're on a day shift while the bats are like, on, on the night shift. That's what he means by changing guard. Swallows do not fly at night, okay? They fly daytime, sunset, and they go to roost, but they are the night shift birds, okay? So in the night, they come out and they do their thing. Bats are not easy creeping into one scalp. Now, here he begins to show the readers how he hates these creatures, okay? So bats and uneasy creeping into one scalp as the bats swoop, swoop overhead, flying madly. Now, let's take a look at the two flying patterns. The swallows, he described as flying with beauty, aesthetics. But the bats, he noticed, he said the loop, the twitcher, uh, yeah, uh, the twitch. He's saying they are flying madly. Their flying pattern is not beautiful at all. Okay. Pipistrello, black piper on an infinitesimal pipe. Little lumps that fly in air and have voices indefinite, widely vindictive. Wings like bits of umbrella. He keeps on using disgusting words diction for the bat. Pipistrello is an Italian word for bat. Okay? An offensive one for that matter. The personal starts mentioning their characteristics and features that are creepy to him. Voices indefinite, widely vindictive. Now, these are not uh, these are not good attributes, adjectives to use to describe uh, a creature. So clearly, the bat disgusts the personnel as it describes its wings like an umbrella. He continues, he said, bats. You see the exclamation here, he's still shocked. Okay, still feeling, he's voicing out his emotions here. Creatures that hang themselves upside down, and creatures that hang themselves up like an old rag to sleep and disgustingly upside down. You see, this, this particular uh, lines clearly shows the poet or the personnel hates bats. This is an exclamation of disgust, describing the bats like an old rag. An old rag is something that is an eyesore, something you want to do away with. Now, something that sleeps upside down is strange, okay? is strange, not just strange, it's mysterious. And people can easily attach different superstitious beliefs to that trait, okay? So the, the bat sleeping upside down um, disgusts the poet, the person. Hanging upside down like rows of disgusting old rags and grinning in their sleep. Now, you see, when somebody sleeps or grins in their sleep, it, it makes it look scary. So he's trying to paint, uh, he's trying to convince the readers that bats are scary, 
and they are not uh, nice to have around. In China, bat is a symbol for happiness, not for me. You see, one man's meat is another man's poison. In China, uh, the Chinese people love bats. They have this bat soup that they eat, okay? Uh, there are countries where they love bats and they eat bats, they adore bats. Some can just have it as their griot, uh, as their totem, sorry. Uh, but the person I say, no, not for me. Okay, um, so you can clearly see in this poem that You can clearly see that in this poem, the personnel does not like bat. It's a simple, straightforward poem that uh, expresses the personnel's emotions about a creature. He shows here that he likes the swallows, okay? And he does not like the bat. He gives his reasons anyway. And uh, it's left for us to choose whether to join the personnel in liking the bats or not liking the bats. Thank you very much.